welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan and in today's video I'm going to be teaching you how to care for pea chicks and this is going to go all the way from egg incubation to raising them and tame peacocks and why some become so aggressive later on in life. So if you love animals be sure to also follow me over on TikTok and Instagram where I do post almost daily. Before we get started, I just want to give a shout out to the sponsor and that is Flyfix. These are the perfect fly traps for your farm or backyard. They are non-toxic and safe for your birds and other pets. They are extremely effective against flies. So check the link down below to get yours. And if you like the clothes you see I'm wearing in my videos, be sure to check the link below because there's also links for that as well. All right, so let's talk about pea chicks which are baby peacocks, also known as peafowl. Now, I wanna jump ahead and talk about something that is really important, and that is socialization, because this is one of the most important parts of raising peafowl. One of the things I find the most important. I find this to be the most important part because if not done right, the peacocks will end up very aggressive to humans when they mature. Aggression is not normal. I've had this argument with a lot of people who have peacocks or actually just with people in general about any animal. Just because something is common or happens a lot does not make it normal. And of course, we've all heard of adult peafowl attacking uh, humans and that's why people are really afraid of them. And while this is a common problem, it is not a normal problem and it is not normal behavior for the bird. Aggression is the result of humans. Humans do cause these aggressive behaviors in peafowl, whether intentional or unintentional. And that's why it's so important to try to avoid those problems. And so after they're tame, then, um, you know, after this, you know, six weeks, people abandon their pea chicks and they might not see it as abandonment, but the chicks definitely do because they do spend so, so much more time with their family unit that when they are um, left after that initial bonding period, um, it is like they are abandoned. So just because at that point they're being able to eat by themselves, they're being able to roost by themselves, they don't even need temperatures that are that high anymore, that does not mean that they are finished with their development. These aren't chickens, they are an exotic bird, they are not domesticated, so it's really important to treat them as, um, as they need to be treated, which is a wild animal. And this abandonment impedes their emotional development. And the problem now though too is that they are also tame, so they are not afraid of humans. And when they reach sexual maturity, they start to become very aggressive and they become very aggressive towards humans. And then you combine that with their territorial behavior and mix all that stuff in and they have just um, been known for attacking humans and that's why people think that peacocks can be very aggressive towards humans. But like I said, not normal behavior and we can avoid it. Peafowl are intelligent animals with complex family structures that are essential to their development. They are very social and family oriented. Chicks stay with their mother for about 11 months. They are not like chickens that are ready to be on their own at six weeks. They stay together with their mother for almost a year. After that, they will hang around together in groups and even go back to visit their mother while she's nesting on eggs and then raising her next babies. They bond with each other and remember individual birds of their flocks. Males stay around together and in flocks until they're three years old, and at four they become territorial during the breeding season and will fight for land and hens. But once the breeding season is over, which usually lasts about four months out of the year, they'll come back together and stay in large flocks. This includes mature males, and they do not fight with each other during this time. But like with other animals, changing the social structure does affect their behavior. And I see a lot of people wanting to tame their pea chicks, and so they spend a lot of time with them the first couple of weeks, um, like about, you know, the first six weeks. And usually with chickens, that's when um, they're really becoming adults. That is not the case for a peafowl. Many peafowl breeders you talk to are actually completely against taming chicks at all. This is because it has become such a common problem. I'm one of the outliers that will say, yes, you can do it, but you have to be dedicated to it. If you want to tame your pea chicks, you need to be able to dedicate a substantial amount of your time to them for the first year. 
If you don't have this time, use a brooder or leave them with the hen. Don't try to tame your chicks. And what I mean by this is that my chicks live in the house, they sleep next to the bed, they stay with us inside for months. Uh, when they get pretty big, I move them outside, but continue to have them with me during the day and just spend as much time with them as possible. As you can see, these are fully mature peacocks during the breeding season that are interacting with me in such a healthy, non-aggressive way. They're also good around other people and they do not have those bizarre tendencies of attacking cars and other shiny objects. I just really want people to understand the importance of this part of their socialization. Aggression in peafowl is not normal and shouldn't be happening. Let's jump to talking about eggs. Many people use incubators. Personally, I don't because like I said, those family structures are important to them and I do want to give them a normal experience. However, I am considering getting an incubator to hatch chicks for hens that are setting. Hatch rates with free roaming or even caged peafowl are lower in dry climates, and peahens are usually really good about taking in chicks if they're close in age to the ones that they have. Now, if you're in a hot, dry climate or even if you're incubating, humidity is such an important factor and something you really need to consider. Low humidity can kill your embryos even in later stages of development when the chick is ready to hatch. This is um, gonna be a number one factor of them dying right before hatching or in the process of hatching. So if you are um, letting them raise their own young and you're in a dry climate, you might wanna think about misters for around your aviary or the area that they're uh, setting in because that is going to help keep the humidity a little higher and you're gonna have a better success rate with your chicks. Check your eggs through candlelight method, which is putting them under a flashlight in the dark and checking for signs of light. Bad eggs need to be thrown out because they will make the rest of the nest bad. Once they hatch, if they are having trouble hatching, I actually made a video of how to get a chick out of an egg, so please go watch that. These are really important steps to follow, and if not done correctly, you can end up killing the chick. Chicks need to be fed a high protein diet. A game bird feed is the best option. Game bird as in pheasant, not fighting roosters. If you don't have that, you can get a turkey starter, as long as it's about 25 to 30% protein. And even as adults, they do need a high protein. I made a video on how to feed peafowl and treats that you can give them, so please check that out. They love live worms and other insects. I also provide my chicks with canned insects and that is such a good treat for them and also a really good source of protein because in the wild, this would make up a large part of their diet. Pea chicks need to be kept warm. When I hand raise my chicks, I use a heating pad on low and blankets because they are sleeping next to me. Um, but you have to be really careful with that. You can use a heat light, but also please don't go and get the 200 watt heat um, that they sell like at feed stores for during the summer. Uh, the temperature is like over 90 degrees, you are going to end up cooking your chicks. So please use common sense and measure the temperature around them so that you don't overheat them. It is so, so important to have an actual thermometer on hand to measure your temperatures. When hand raising them, I sometimes have them at room temperature, but they're able to get warm when they are sleeping and resting. And that's really the basics for caring for chicks. Please let me know what other information you would like to know about PFAL. I plan on also talking about medications and treatments. If you need something specific, let me know. You can also message me over on Instagram for questions. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram and TikTok.